All right, now this question is taken from the CSEC Mathematics January 2010, and this is a histogram question. So hit, let's hear what they have to say. It says a class of 26 students each recorded the distance traveled to school. The distance to the nearest kilometers is recorded in the table below. Copy and complete the frequency table from the given data set. So first thing, let's do part one. So we need to complete the table using these numbers that they give us. So as we can see, between one and five, there's only one, which is the three, between six and 10. All right, so we need to complete from 21 to 25. Let's use the color yellow. So from 21 to 25, here's a 21, here's a 22, here's a 22. All right, so we're looking, we're looking, here's a 25. I will look in, here's another 22, here's a 24, here's a 23. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we shaded in yellow. So from 21 to 25, there is seven. Uh -huh. Let's use red now for 26 to 30. 26 to 30 we have, all right, so here's a 28. All right, here's a 26. All right, going to 30, going to 30. Don't say any more, don't say any more. Right? And that is 26 to 30. Do we see any 30? Yes, here's a 30. All right, so that is three. Oh. All right, now going from 31 to 35, let's use the color black. So from 31 to 35, we'll see a 32 here, bright and clear. We'll see a 34 here. All right, we don't see any more. That's 39, not, not in the range that we want. So that is how many black? Two. They only need 36 to 40. So I'm gonna use, go back to, I'm gonna go back to red for uh, 36 to 40, but this time I'm gonna put a dot underneath it. So I see a 39 right here. I don't see any more big numbers. Okay, so I just see one, so that's one. And that completes our table. Now, before you finish, I always want you to do this. Add up and see if the frequency tally sum to 26. One and two is three, three and four is seven, seven and six is 13, 13 and seven is 20, 20 and three is 23, and two is 25 and one is 26. Once the frequency adds up to 26, in this case, you're fine. You want it to add up to the number that they give to ensure that you didn't miss any numbers. All right, because sometimes we can miss a number by accident. All right, now here's the, here is the part that we really want to get to. The part that we're all excited and laughing about, the histogram part. So now it says using a scale of two centimeters to represent five kilometers on the horizontal axis and a scale of one centimeter to represent one student on the vertical, draw a histogram to represent the data. Hey. Now remember when you're plotting histogram, what you're going to do is you use the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary with the frequency. For histogram, you use the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary, all right? That's what we're gonna use. So the lower class boundary is 0 0.5 here, and we know the upper class is 5.5, 5, all right? And so forth. So let's go ahead and do our histogram. So I'm just gonna open up the graph. All right, now that we have our graph open, remember for our histogram, let me just write out the word histogram. Remember we're plotting upper class and lower class boundaries on our X axis and frequency on our Y axis. Hey. And they gave us a scale that we need to use. The scale that they give us is they tell us that how many centimeters on the X? Two centimeters to represent five kilometers on the X. Let's go ahead and do that. That's no problem. Two centimeters to represent five. So this is then five, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and this is 40. All right, that's in kilometers. All right, and then on our y-axis now, they told us that we need to use one centimeter to represent one student. So one centimeter represent one student on our Y. So it is, it is perfectly fine how it is. This is seven here, six, five, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, so now we can go ahead and finish up this question now. So doing our histogram, we know it's 0 0.5 to 5.5 and the frequency is one. So what you're gonna do is 0 0.5 to 5.5. It's not gonna be perfect, all right? Oh. So 0 0.5 is somewhere about here and 5.5 is somewhere right here. And the frequency is one. So what you're gonna do then is you're just gonna I draw a box connecting that. That's from 0 0.5 to 5.5. And that frequency we'll put on it is 1. Oh. Now, you're going to do the same for the rest of the intervals. From 5.5 to 10.5, the frequency is 2. From 5.5 to 10.5, the frequency is 2. So right here is 10.5. Whoops. I know it kind of curved away. So let me fix that. 10.5 going up here. This would have a frequency of two. From 10.5 to 15.5, that have a frequency of four. All right, 10.5 to 15.5, the frequency is four. So going up. All right, I don't like that. That's not straight. All right, you're making, make sure that you're using a ruler. I'm not. Well, I could. Oh. Yeah, I could. I could use a straight line. So I don't know why that didn't come to me. But I can use a straight-ish line. Going up to four here. All right, that's relatively straight. And then we need six right here for a frequency between 16 to 20. So that's 15.5 to 20.5. The frequency is six. <sighs> frequency being six will come up to the number six on the y-axis. And that's that right there. Then we'll go up to seven now between 20.5 to 25.5. We'll go up to seven. All right. And then we're gonna start come back down now. Coming back down, we can see what we have here is going from 26 to 30. 26 to 30, that is three. All right, so going from 26 to 30, we'll see that is three. So we'll make sure we get it up to three. All right, and then again, from 31 to 35, that's two. So 35.5, that frequency is two. That is one. So we're going to go from 35.5 to 40.5. And that right there is one. This completes our frequency diagram. It was very tedious to do it right here on the graph, but uh, because I'm on the computer, but that's okay. You should make sure that you're practicing with graph papers as if you're in an exam with pencil, ruler, and stuff like that, all right? And I love to put the frequency on top of each column, all right? So you put your six, the seven. This was three, two, and one. I like to do that, all right? That's our histogram.
All right, cool. Now that we do our histogram, now we can, we get our five marks. Let's go ahead now and do part C and part D. Oh, by the way, just, uh, let me just refill back the table right here. It was seven, three, two, one. It says calculate the probability that a student chosen at random from the class recorded the distance traveled to school as 26 kilometers or more. 26 kilometers or more, it's all of these numbers. 26 or more, all of, oh, sorry, I included the 21 to 25. 26 or more is all of these numbers. All of these numbers are 26 or more. So that is three, two, and one is six. All right, so that means the probability that a student chosen at random travels 26 kilometers or more to school is six students out of the number of students. And remember the total number of students given was 26, all right? So that's six out of 26. You can give that as a decimal if you want, but I'll leave it as that, six out of 26. Oh. Now, part D. Part D says the PTA plans to set up a transportation service for the school. It says which is which average mean, mode, or median is most appropriate for estimating the cost of the service. Now, it says which one is most appropriate for us to use, and it says give a reason for your answer. Now, any reason that you give is sufficient. Let me say that one more time. Any answer you give is sufficient, but it's the rationale behind which one you are selecting oh. for the PTA to use. So looking at it, let's look at the distribution, right? We're going to go back to our histogram. Looking at the distribution, the distribution is suggesting that majority of students travel in the mid-range between here and here. So what we want to do is to get rid of the extreme endpoints. The extreme endpoints are those that live very close to school and those who live very far away from school. In order to mitigate against that, it's probably best we use the median, oh. all right? In order to get the true mid-value, we want to just use the median. All right, a median would be a good estimate. And we're going to give that reason. Now, let's say you wanted to say mode. You'd have to find a reason why you're suggesting the mode. You could say mode because most of the persons travel in this region. No problem. If you say mode, that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what these are actually are, right? If you were to write down the median, MED mean median, what's the median, the mid value? The middle value between, the middle value of 26 is, be, is between, what's that? 13.5. The 13.5 number would be, let me show you where the median would lie. The median would lie 13.5, so this is three, this is seven, this is 13, Notice that the median would lie in here. In this range would give us the median. The median is between 21 to 25. Also, the mode is between 21 to 25. And I'm also saying that the mean are going to be between 21 to 25. But that's because the data set looks very symmetric. The data is symmetric. Yeah. So... What I'm suggesting is the best one for us to use is the median. So this is what we're going to say, the median. All right. And now we're going to give the reason for why the median is the best one to use. 